This is an update on the evidence for childhood obesity prevention. It has been prepared by Professor Louise Bauer and myself, Professor Bill Bellew. We're from the University of Sydney. The focus of the Paul Ramsey Foundation includes reducing the incidence of chronic disease through the prevention of modifiable risk factors. Today we're going to look at childhood obesity. Our focus today is on scoping and building the evidence base, allowing us to reflect and adapt to invest in outcomes and impact that will make a difference. We'll be thinking about using the bulletproof problem solving method with the seven steps shown on the left of your screen. Let's try to define the problem. In Australia, almost one in four children are overweight or obese. The causes are complex. Energy balance and body weight are influenced by a complex mix of factors. Solutions are known, but there is a failure to fully implement them. Obesity is a global problem, and there are as yet no exemplar populations in which the obesity epidemic has been reversed through public health measures. One exception at city level is Amsterdam. Long-term actions are needed to address childhood obesity, but the government focus is typically short-term. In New South Wales, concerted efforts have led to a stabilization of rates. These rates increase with social disadvantage. After three years as a Premier's priority, childhood obesity has now been redesignated as just a health priority in New South Wales. Parents typically are in denial about the issue. Most parents agree obesity is a serious problem in the community, yet they misperceive their own children's weight status as about right. Let's think about the complex causation of childhood obesity. This systems map of influences on obesity was developed by Foresight in the UK in 2007. Let's simplify it a little. The influences involve social psychology, food production, food consumption, physiology, individual psychology, individual physical activity and the physical activity environment. Later others have added to this systems map including commercial environment, political environment, advocacy and social movements, as well as the knowledge environment, knowledge mobilization processes, and governance, accountability and transparency. This map shows a number of children living with overweight or obesity in 2016 and the increase in prevalence from 2010. Australian data come from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare and show that over a million Australian children live with this condition, but that the increase has been relatively stable since 2010. Here we're looking at childhood overweight and obesity in New South Wales by certain characteristics. See in particular the bottom of the slide, which shows socioeconomic disadvantage and the fact that the most disadvantaged quintile has the highest rates. So we can say with confidence that overweight and obesity rates increase with social disadvantage. Obesity is more prevalent in areas of lower socioeconomic status and is higher amongst indigenous children and young people. Solutions to childhood obesity are known. 
In 2017, the World Health Organization's Commission on Ending Childhood Obesity produced its action plan and executive summary. The Commission noted that so, no single intervention can reverse the epidemic and placed great importance on leadership, joint action, data for action and good governance. Here we see the six main domains of action from the ECHO plan. They involve intake of healthy foods, promoting physical activity, intervening in preconception and during pregnancy, tackling early childhood diet and physical activity, looking at health, nutrition and physical activity for school aged children and dealing with weight management for children who are already overweight or obese. Here's a summary of evidence from the World Cancer Research Foundation. Some factors decrease risk and some increase it. For example, walking, aerobic physical activity, foods containing dietary fibre, Mediterranean type diet, and having been breastfed, all carry strong evidence for decreasing weight gain, overweight and obesity. Meanwhile, screen time, consumption of sugar sweetened beverages, um, screen time in adults as well as children, consumption of fast foods and the Western type diet all increase the risk. The University of Sydney has recently produced a new evidence summary for the New South Wales Government. Whilst the report is embargoed, the published evidence already in the public domain allows us additional insights from what is the very latest evidence. Two main questions are addressed. What's the new evidence for obesity prevention in these age groups and across settings and strategies? And what does the combined body of evidence indicate as the most promising actions? As we show this grid, existing evidence is shown as blue, whilst new emerging evidence is shown as red. There is emerging evidence for interventions in the first thousand days of life. Dietary and physical activity interventions have strong evidence. Physical activity alone did not reduce BMI in the early years, whilst diet only had little impact on BMI in the 6 to 12 year age group. Overall, the picture on physical activity and diet can be a little confusing, but we can overthink this. Certainly the evidence shows that both factors are involved and the table may reflect that more evidence is required to develop our knowledge on these interventions. In the childcare or school setting, the new evidence points to the importance of school policies in six to 12 year olds, and for teenagers, the importance of peer involvement, including tailored feedback. To reduce sugar sweetened beverage consumption, there is increasingly strong evidence that taxation of sugar sweetened beverages is effective. There is moderate evidence that social marketing and mass media campaigns can be effective. They should not be delivered in isolation, however, but supported when broader social marketing campaign contexts. In other words, they should be linking communication strategies to policies, programs and services. In the community setting, a school component is an important part of a multi-component program and parental concern is an important factor in attendance. This is important because of our understanding that parents misperceive the weight status of their children. To sum up the key messages from the new evidence, there is no single solution. Prevention efforts need to start before birth. Taxing sugar sweetened beverages is an effective method. Unhealthy marketing needs to be restricted. 
mass media and social marketing must not be undertaken in isolation, but rather linked to products, programs, services. With adolescents, peer involvement and feedback is essential. Some cities have been successful with a comprehensive approach and at sub-national level, some governments have been able to lead by example. To summarise, no single action will solve the overweight and obesity epidemic, but rather requires all the factors shown here in this helpful slide from the World Cancer Research Fund. Why are known solutions not implemented successfully? One reason is that the most cost-effective strategies are also those most vigorously opposed by industry. Another is that comprehensive policy must integrate transparent governance and accountability mechanisms. Typically, we have shortcomings in strategy design, investment failures, inconsistent governance and accountability, and underestimation of the need for government to address market failures as four flaws in our implementation of what we already know. We need to act at three levels. Focus policy actions, scale up level one. These are aimed directly at high risk groups or individuals. Enabler policy actions, scale up level two and three are ineffective in themselves, but they underpin the effectiveness of other policy actions. These are necessary, but insufficient. Amplifier policy actions, scale up level four, are key to shifting the system and population as a whole, but they cannot act if the other elements are not in place at scale up levels one, two, and three. We need these actions at multiple levels, focused, enabler, and amplifier policy actions. Here we see the Amsterdam Healthy Weight Program. 10 pillars of policy action are shown in the center of the screen. We know from the impact evaluation that between 2012 and 2015, obesity rates fell from 8% to 6%. If we look at the 10 pillars of action in Amsterdam and then look at available policy actions in New South Wales, we can conclude that New South Wales has most of the building blocks used successfully in Amsterdam. Going back to our levels of policy action, perhaps the focus on high risk and disadvantaged communities shown here in scale up level one is a suitable area of focus for the Paul Ramsey Foundation to consider. If we look at the local health district of Southwest Sydney in New South Wales, we can see a best practice approach in progress. This builds on the strategies already shown in the previous information in other words, matching most of the actions underway in Amsterdam. Here we have a focused community effort underway in a disadvantaged part of New South Wales. Is this a suitable area for the Paul Ramsey Foundation to look at? And thinking how we increase equity impact, Shariki Kumanyika has just produced some evidence and a framework to, for us to think about increasing healthy options, reducing deterrence to healthy behaviours, building community capacity, and improving social and economic resources. We have started to look at the problem definition of childhood obesity and summarised the evidence. This takes us some way towards defining the problem, one part of our seven steps. Now it's time to reflect 
and adapt the work for the Paul Ramsey Foundation to think about investment in outcomes and impact to make a difference. Thanks for your attention.